Well, hey folks, it's your old pal, King Waspinator. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. I felt like, uh, you know, breaking out of recent patterns. Been talking a lot about D&D, &D, did a bunch of riffs videos, been uh, talking quite a bit about the World of Darkness lately. Uh, how about a throwback to something I have brought up in the past but didn't dwell on very much, and that's the Dune role-playing game by, by uh, Modifius. Uh, I still find, of their various uh, more recent publications, it does some interesting things with the rules uh, that conceptually, uh, you know, uh, could lead to some interesting role-playing choices. It's one major critical flaw, just in terms of the mechanics of, of the game, is that it, the uh, rules for house creation and management are incomplete, and apparently, you know, are going to be released in source books, which is a bit of a letdown. Uh, I mean, it's hardly the only example of that sort of thing being done in the role-playing game uh, hobby in terms of publishing. Even I myself am guilty of it, perhaps, in my own little ways, in the books I've put out. Uh, I mean, after all, the, the name of the game is selling more books and all that. Uh, however, to me, the, the real flaw with Dune as a role-playing game, and actually is translated into most other forms of media outside of the original novels, is that uh, its real message is kind of lost. Uh, you know, we, we basically keep coming back around and around and focusing on the first book. Maybe if we're lucky, if we got that one sci-fi miniseries that actually got through the second two sequels, uh, Dune Messiah and Children of Dune. But you don't really, really see the point of what Dune's actually doing as an overall saga, the greater story of it, until you get to at least God Emperor of Dune, and arguably not really until you get to uh, Heretics and Chapter House Dune. And that is, is it's telling, you know, the greater arc of history and leading the audience as a living witness, so to say, to events that in the original books, you know, are... are even if they're remarkable people, it's still just the deeds of people who are fallible in all their various ways and make their mistakes. And then you get to the fourth book and you've jumped forward several thousand years and suddenly these historical events are now mythical. And then you jump forward another several thousands of years and those original events are like have grown beyond myth into like, you know, universal religious concepts and such. We go from Moadib just being a person who, like I said, was talented and was a remarkable person in his own way, but was not a god, and uh, for, for all of his uh, clairvoyant vision of the future, uh, was, was not infallible and truly prescient. Uh, but by the time you get to, you know, uh, Heretics of Dune and Chapter House Dune, you know, people like just like casually like pray to him and all that kind of stuff. Uh, believing, you know, these kind of uh, grandiose uh, ideas of what these people were like, even with the fact that there's technology in this timeline that can better preserve records across time. But uh, still, it, everything is lionized and uh, made to be uh, uh, more epic in scale, uh, more profound, uh, these have become fundamental roots to an entire civilizational culture that is itself diversified into a, to a little hydra-headed entity uh, that, that's starting to curl back upon itself. Unfortunately, the books were never finished, so we never got to see what the real true final grand design was. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson did put out uh, a variety of novels based on Frank Herbert's works, uh, I generally do not like them. I feel like in a lot of ways they kind of uh, uh, miss the message. Uh, they don't even attempt to try to uh, write in the same fashion. Therefore, they're, they're just kind of a let... You're used to these books that are not just telling a story, but are giving you all these great philosophical and political insights. And then you come over to the Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson books, which are now vastly outnumber the original Dune books. And, uh, you know, they're just kind of fairly generic uh, sci-fi stories, uh, you know, with, with these characters' names attached to things, but none of the characters really feel right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rather disappointed in Brian Herbert, although in terms of the writing, that's, that's probably more uh, Kevin J. Anderson's uh, problem. Um, one would wish he could have hired a better ghostwriter, but the problem with all these things is Kind of like the question of, like, why can't we get any good showrunners or good writers to run Star Trek? 
a good science fiction writer has absolutely no motivation to go and write somebody else's property because it's not theirs. They're, they, they have no, if they're good and actually have ideas and things to say, why would they want to, you know, unless they're just like, you know, some childhood fan of the thing, like they have re no real motivation to, to strap themselves into all these limitations and such. And so, you know, a really good high quality uh, science fiction writer is, would probably have been a lot harder, uh, for uh, Brian Herbert to contract to do all this work, whereas Kevin J. Anderson was a guy who, you know, written Star Wars novels and shit, you know, phone it in kind of stuff, like, ooh, a sun crusher. Like, what an innovative idea. Uh, another doomsday weapon from the X Empire. Ah, oh, you know, uh, the only acceptable portion of any of their works for the Dune Saga, I would say, is their uh, stuff set during the Butlerian Jihad, and even that is like, such a like dumbed down literal interpretation of what Frank Herbert was trying to get at about what the Butlerian Jihad was. It was supposed to be a massive social uprising against just having so much computerized machinery in our lives because uh, it was diminishing us as a, as a people. And in terms of Frank Herbert's predictions for the future, I still feel that that is something that could potentially be on the horizon and would need to have a religious jihadi motivation behind it to actually scour uh, all of this stuff out of our out of our civilization because uh, we're not going to ever rationally come to that because rational thought leads to self-indulgence and pleasure being uh, prioritized you know over some sort of greater cosmic responsibility to to, to humanity as a whole uh, despite what people say uh and so like instead of like this philosophical uh war instead you get this very literal war against robots and it turns out that you know the atreides aren't as descended from the original agamemnon agamemnon from ancient greece uh the mycenaean king no they're uh, uh the descendants from a, a robot cyborg overlord uh, who put his brain in a jar and just switches himself around from gigantic robot spider bodies, who calls himself Agamemnon because he and his cohorts all just took a bunch of historical names of gods and ancient kings and shit. Uh, you know, kind of like a superhero team almost. And that was who Vorian Atreides was a clone of. Like, why? Like, uh, uh, Terrible, terrible. Uh, but... They did do uh, two books that were based on the uh, outline that Herbert had for what the last uh, Dune book was supposed to be. Uh, obviously, you know, they stretched it out and made two big, thick novels out of it and intruded a bunch of their own stuff into these things. However, underneath all of that, though, if you're a, you know, a studied fan of Frank Herbert, not just his... Uh, Dune books, but I've also read some of his other materials, like if you've, you know, ever read, like, the Dasadi Experiment, or Destination Void, or the Lazarus Effect, or any of that kind of stuff. Um, you could, like, see underneath what they were writing, the things that actually were, like, stuff that was supposed to be there, stuff like Duncan Idaho is actually the ultimate Kwisatz Haderach, because he's a living witness to history, he's got the the, like the Bene Gesserit and like Leto II, he's got thousands of years of all these gathered memories, but unlike Leto and unlike the Bene Gesserit, all those memories are his because he kept being cloned, made into a Gola over and over and over again and having those memories awakened and then having that life. And then at the you know, very last final version of Duncan Idaho in the books, had all of that put into him at once and awakened because of his en encounter with Mirbella and the Honored Matres. And if you can't tell, uh, you know, uh, the stuff I like about Dune is, you know, like the larger big picture stuff. It's one of the things that is one of the, the few promises that is to be found in this book is that uh, it doesn't have to be set during the original movie. It, it, you don't have to set it on Dune during the time of Paul Atreides. Uh, they've made uh, hints and in the text that they might put out source books for some of these other time periods. Uh... I, I don't I don't know. Unfortunately, like I said, the media trend is going to cause them to always fixate upon the first one, especially since the whole thing's branded around the title Dune. 
uh, how do you make a role playing game about the greater setting and call it Dune without still kind of making the planet Arrakis the focus of the whole thing in the end, even if uh, you might, you know, provide enough detail where people can set it on other places. But are you really playing Dune if, if you're if you're running a game set on Geedy Prime? Uh, kind of thinking and you know so far their their initial output of source material that they have released since the initial rule book came out has all been focused around the the the, even less so the events of the first book but more the events of the first of this new movie series that uh, Gerard Villeneuve is making for us um and just you know like it's I mean there it's nice there it was an all right movie I'm I'm sure the second one will be okay. I have my issues with it, and if you dig back through my catalog, you can probably find some of my uh, older videos I did talking about my thoughts on the movie and earlier reviews of this game. Uh, but like, it, like it, it for with other kinds of entertainment media, they're always going to be hung up on the beginning of the story. And therefore, you're never like it's giving the the mass audience kind of a false impression about what this shit's about, even because uh, you know if you you don't get to the later parts, then like I said, you you don't get to be as an audience witness to the shift and how these things that you just saw with your own eyes and how that's being talked about thousands of years later. You you don't get to experience the disconnect. Uh, you know, I almost wish they would have just jumped in and made God Emperor of Dune and focused that around that clone of, of Duncan Idaho, which is my favorite of the various Duncan Idahos. He's arguably the worst version of Duncan Idaho that lived uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like holding up to his like, you know, the things that made Duncan Idaho a signature person uh, and, and valuable to the Atreides and all that. However, uh, I still find him to be my favorite, the most compelling, the most identifiable. Um... Man lost out of time. Uh, there, there's also that this kind of like echo, like as Duncan Ido is your audience entry, entry character in much of the later books, which is also all kind of weird and you wouldn't necessarily pick up on as long as you just continue to focus on the first part of the Dune series. That's why I question Jason Momoa, uh, you know, being cast because, you know, as, as Duncan Idaho, the dumbass fighter, sure. But what if they did actually manage to carry these movies beyond just Dune 1 and 2 and make Dune Messiah? Are they going to recast Jason Momoa? Are they going to, like, de-age him so you get kind of a younger Baywatch vintage Jason Momoa? Uh, are, are they going to, like, use a bunch of footage of him from uh, Stargate Atlantis and just Photoshop it in there so you get a younger Duncan Idaho that way? And how well is he going to pull off playing a Mentat. How much are you going to buy in to Duncan Idaho the Mentat as portrayed by Jason Momoa? I wanted Chadwick Boseman, but he died, and so, so much for that. But anyway, uh, I guess that's all neither here nor there. I would like to see very much, if anyone from Odiphius just happens to be watching this video, I'd take a great interest if you could set something during the time period of the Fish Speakers, uh, towards the end of Duke Leto II, I mean, of uh, Emperor Leto II's reign, or if you can set something during the Heretics Chapter House time period. Uh, you know, there, you know, there's another thing. You know, early on, back when Dune had first come out, uh, there was some, like, fake controversy, and some people were like, oh, you know, this is old misogynist stuff, and all these men running the galaxy, and men this, and it's all about a man, and... He's a colonizing, cultural appropriating lad and all that kind of shit. Kind of not, once again, like because Hollywood and mass entertainment uh, consumers uh, never get past the first one or two Dune books, they don't see that part of also of the story is yet, yes, it starts off during this very patriarchal, feudal time period. But uh, a lot of, especially what uh, God Emperor Leto II is doing during his 5,000-year reign is shoving human culture into becoming a, a female-dominated society uh, that, that doesn't necessarily, like, feminize the men. It, it's kind of more this kind of early, more kind of probably influenced by second-wave fe feminism because there is, like, a lot of elements of uh, women's sexual liberation kind of written into the text. 
Uh, but, you know, much kind of just realizing that, like, men can be manipulated and controlled and harnessed uh, through, you know, uh, feminine wiles. And then have that energy and violence focused and directed in the directions that they want, want to point it at kind of a thing. Uh, the, the, the end result of the setting is a very, like, diversified, divested, uh, decentralized culture. Uh, there is no longer any central imp imperial structure. Uh, the guild no longer has a monopoly on space travel. Uh, t technology has made a slow creep back, albeit uh, there is still resistance to too much computerization. Uh, and we'll never get to see that. The role-playing game is like our only chance to maybe get to have that in any kind of like entertainment media that isn't the novels, which is always going to be an uphill sell to actually get people to sit down and read the fucking shit it's much easier to put them in front of a television or to like have them play a role-playing game and so it, it, i'd just be really nice if they would actually focus on that side of the set, setting instead of just constantly repeating the same old shit we've already seen a third of a dozen times so anyway that's it stay waspinated have a good one and remember that fear is the mind.